When we learn how to tell time by reading a clock, one of the first things that we come to realize is that as soon as any of the hands reach the 12, what that hand measures resets to zero. For example, at the top of each hour, it is zero minutes. The minutes hand then goes through the 60 minutes of the hour, but when it returns to pointing at the 12, the minutes reset to zero. We can do the same with the hours by considering 12 as the zero hour. And in fact, we consider 12 the same as zero when we add 12 hours to the position of the hour hand. If the hour hand is pointing at the four, then 12 hours later, the hour hand will be pointing at the four again, like the hour hand had zero change in position. Considering 12 the same as zero when we tell time also helps when adding other amounts. For example, if we start a job at 9 a.m. and we work for eight hours, we don't get off work at 17 a.m. What we do is add three hours from 9 a.m. to noon, and then reset the amount to zero before adding the other five hours from noon to 5 p.m. However, there is another way to calculate this. We can add nine plus eight equals 17, and then divide by 12. The remainder after division is five, which becomes our answer. These sort of calculations are called clock arithmetic, which is referred to as modular arithmetic in mathematics. In our example, we would say that 17 is congruent to five modulo 12, which means that five and 17 are in the same equivalence class. Considering all integers modulo 12, we can name more integers in the same equivalence class as five and 17 by just continually adding 12, five, 17, 29, 41, etc. We can observe this same modular arithmetic modulo 12 in the equal tempered tuning system. If we look at a piano keyboard and start at middle C, notating the number zero for C, we can count 12 tones up to reach another C. With this labeling system, we consider all notes with the same letter name to be in the same pitch class, and the notes in the same pitch class are all separated by the interval of an octave. This tuning system is very common in Western music and is called a 12-tone or chromatic scale. The interval between consecutive notes in the chromatic scale is called a semitone. If we start at C and repeatedly add the interval of a perfect fifth, we can generate the entire 12 tone scale using modular arithmetic. In our table from before, the interval from C to G is a perfect fifth, and the addition is zero plus seven equals seven. Adding another perfect fifth, we would get seven plus seven equal 14, which is congruent to two modulo 12 and gives us the note D. Continuing with this pattern, we obtain what is called the circle of fifths, which we can see in this image by starting at C at the top and going around clockwise. We can hear this on a piano by starting at the lowest C and then ending at the highest C. But keep in mind, while the notes span more than one octave, you are getting notes in the same pitch class as all of the notes we described in one octave. We can also use the interval of a perfect fourth, repeatedly adding five, to generate the 12-tone scale. While the semitone, fourth, and fifth can generate the 12-tone scale, other intervals will generate different scales. If we repeatedly add a whole step, which means starting at C and adding the number two, we generate the whole tone scale, C, D, E, F-sharp, G-sharp, A-sharp. If we repeatedly add a minor third, which means starting at C and adding three, we generate the scale C, D sharp, F sharp, A. Notice that when we repeatedly added two, we got a scale of 12 divided by two or six notes. And when we repeatedly added three, we got a scale of 12 divided by three or four notes. But when we use the perfect fourth and perfect fifth, we were repeatedly adding five and seven respectively, which do not divide 12 evenly. This is why those intervals generated all 12 tones. Other scales that we might be familiar with, such as major and minor scales, are not made by repeatedly adding the same interval. However, some of the ideas from modular arithmetic show up when describing the notes in those familiar scales. Both of those scales use eight notes. Let's focus on the C major scale to describe them. Notice how this is different from how we developed our previous scales, most notably with using one for the C that starts the scale. And while there are other words for some of the notes in this scale, the numbering system is sometimes used when writing chords. For example, the C major nine chord 
is made up of the tonic, major third, perfect fifth, major seventh, and then one more note on top, the ninth. If we notice that the tonic and the octave are separated by seven steps, since one plus seven equals eight, then this tells us that we can understand what note the ninth is by seeing what it is congruent to modulo seven. We can do this by subtracting seven, so nine minus seven equal two. And we see that the note that is called the ninth is in the same pitch class as the major second, which is D in this case. So the C major nine chord is made of the notes C, E, G, B, D. With practice, most musicians are not doing calculations when reading and playing music. However, using ideas related to modular arithmetic, musical ideas can be shared in a convenient way that allows for quick changes. One of these ways is the Nashville numbering system, which replaces chord names with numbers, so that transposing to new keys becomes as simple as changing the tonic, or one chord. 